kitchens at this level either function to pure perfection, or when someone throws a spanner in the works, bang, the whole thing breaks down. And... My real feet in the heart of Paris, uh, stepping in the Guisabois kitchen. Uh, working for Marco White and Gavroche was um, inspirational. I really felt at home at Guisabois, and that was a huge influence in my cooking. <laughs> Even after 30 years of practicing this profession, I still don't really know why I chose cooking. Perhaps because it was an easy solution, considering I was living in a village at the time. My father could have just as easily introduced me to music, or my mother could have taught me sewing. For them, it was easier to find me a job in a kitchen. When you were 14 or 12 or 13 years old, and you tell your parents you would like to be a couturier, it is very difficult in the village to find an employer. Music is a bit easier, but it was already a very uncertain job at the time. I didn't know if I could really make a living from it. With cooking, it's different. It is easier to tell your parents that you want to become a chef. There were plenty of good restaurants in my village, and so it was very easy to become an apprentice in the region of Brittany. The other two great chefs who inspired me would be the Rue brothers. Um, with new classical cuisine, that was probably one of the first books I ever bought. And I've, it's probably the most worn out book that I've got now because I always refer back to it. I've been in Australia 11 years now. Went to Melbourne and I started at Le Restaurant in, in the Regent and it was one of the most inspirational kitchens I've been in. They were using chilies or pickled ginger or fresh ginger or kaffir lime leaves or it was a whole new um, way, of way of thinking. But we have a very close-knit group of suppliers here who understand exactly what we want uh, for our product here also, like they do in Europe. And I work very, very closely with these guys so we, we can get what we want before it goes out of the country.